This video is brought to you by UEI Test Instruments, Essential Instruments, Outstanding Service, and by the Quick Connects from Way Technologies. For more information on this great product, check them out on their website, link in the description below. All right, we got a no cooling call here. Customer said the outdoor unit is not coming on. He said he put a capacitor on it because he thought that's what it was. And he said it's still not coming on. A little muddy right here. Very nice people. Very nice house. We have a Lennox. The neighbor has a Lennox too. Let's uh, see. Take the disconnect out. See if the contactor is even pulled in. They have to go in the attic. She said he went up in the attic last night. And obviously, if he would have saw water in the pan, he would have told me that. But the wife is here. And she said he didn't go in the attic. Okay, the contactor is not pulled in. He did change the capacitor. Now, these have the magic red button. I would not suspect that the red button, that the high pressure switch would be tripped. But you never know. If it is tripped, this time of the year, he's got an issue. Yep. There it is. Nope, that's not the issue. Okay. So here we'll button that back up and we'll check for 24 volts i believe that is the only pressure switch in the circuit i don't think these units have a load. have a uh low pressure switch to my knowledge There is no low pressure switch. So I'll check it just for shits and giggles, but I know we don't have 24 volts coming. But we'll check it because this is the high pressure switch. And this one goes straight to the contactor. So it's only one pressure switch breaking the circuit. Three volts, so no 24. Okay, we'll have to go in the attic. All right. Y'all should be able to see that. We got a pan full of water. You must have not saw that last night. The flow switch is definitely lifted up. <coughs> the little riser here. It's nasty down in there. 
All right, well, unlike some of you guys and Ted, Ted Cook, our drain lines do not terminate outside. Normally they terminate in a sewer stack. So I'm gonna verify that. Then we'll have to cut the line and we'll shop vac it. <coughs> All right, so we'll cut it here, suck it out with the vac. Um, the staircase is under a garage. I usually have enough tubing to get to a sink or to something. But being that there's not one close, once we clear the line, we'll just go through here. I'll take this off and siphon the water into there. definitely clogged up this way. All right, well, my little tramp, my little siphon and thing didn't work. Uh, so I, I made a little mess on the platform here. I used that little scooper there to bail the, most of the water out. The flow switch is down. I'm going buy me another transfer pump. Um, I did a video showing my little pump that I use. It's a little pump that you stick in the pan. It's got a hose coming off of it, and you can empty the pan into the primary line after you unstop it. It works really great. If you haven't seen that video and you want to see it, leave me a comment and I'll reply you with a link to the video. Or maybe I'll just, I'll tell you what, at the end of this video, I'll post like one of those YouTube card things to the link to that video. Either way is fine. I lost my transfer pump. I think I left it on another job, but they're only like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. So I'm going to go pick me up another one because that pan is not empty, but it's empty enough to where the float switch is down. So we're gonna go outside, reconnect the low voltage wires and everything should be fine. Okay, once we connect those wires back, that contactor should pull in. I have the disconnect out. Yep. Contactors in. Plug this in. There she is. All right, they'll have cooling now.
yeah, she definitely needs a good cleaning. Let's try to sign them up on my maintenance program. I did start up a maintenance program. It's not, it's not a maintenance contract per, per, uh, per se. Basically, I don't do like most of you other guys. I don't make my customers pay me a one-time yearly fee. There's the information. A lot of people are interested. It's a 13 tier straight cool Linux four ton from 2010. So this unit's 10 years old already. Um, I don't make my customers pay a one-time yearly fee. Basically, I just have them sign my agreement that they're gonna do maintenance with me and I give them a discounted rate. Uh, whatever my, whatever, you know, my going service call rate, I give them about $20 an hour off of that to perform the maintenance. And uh, it usually evens out. They pay me that twice a year to come maintenance their units, usually evens out to a contract. But since I'm a small company, uh, it keeps me collecting money every time I uh, come do a maintenance instead of collecting it all in one lump sum. It helps me during the winter time because people tend to buy maintenance during the spring and they pay you that lump sub during the spring, which is great, but you're already busy enough in the spring. So that way I get paid every time I do maintenance. And they tend to like it that way. They don't like buying into these contracts around here because these guys are really expensive with their maintenances. So. The Linux is back up and running. It is January the 7th. It's mild, it's about 60 something degrees, but it's supposed to get warmer this weekend. So he wanted his air back on. And it'll get cold in February, and that'll be the end of it. Then it'll start getting hot in March. Thanks for watching. See y'all on the next one.